Hello, 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 hello. Happy Valentine's Day, almost. Closer to Valentine's in some parts of the world than we are in Costa Rica. Welcome, Sunday afternoon, live from Rhythmia. Fruits, juice bar, belly and all up, on up to the fruits, juice bar. Come on, you guys, come and belly on up to the bar, both of you. Come and say hi. I've got some some hangers on, some people hanging around that I have to come and say hi. This is Ingrid. Ingrid, this is our Facebook viewers. We all know Kenneth. Ingrid's just wrapping up her shift for the day. Thought she'd come over and say hello to everybody. We're talking about aphrodisiacs today. You know the word? Is there a word for aphrodisiacs in Spanish? Aphrodisiacos. Aphro Even sounds sexy when you say it like that, doesn't it? Everything in Spanish sounds sexy as far as I'm concerned. Sexy is Sexy dessert, sexy food we're talking about. Because Valentine's Day is on February 14th. Yeah. Is it a big holiday celebrated here in Costa Rica? Yes. How do we how do we celebrate it's it? It's a big celebration for the couples. For the couples, exactly. And friends. So people buy flowers and chocolates and go out for fancy dinners. Yeah. So they're doing that here in Costa Rica just like what we do in North America. So I thought today we would celebrate it. We're gonna do a couple recipes going to talk about some ingredients. The idea is don't buy anything. Make the 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 recipe of the day, you say, you know what, I make this with love and you need to try it. With a lot of love. Yeah. The secret ingredient yeah. is always love. Yeah. Especially on Valentine's Day. Don't forget. Exactly. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, you guys. So again, always with the small talk. Who we got? We've got a couple people watching. George Bell. Hello, George Bell. Lovely to see you. Jeff Clark. You guys are amazing. So great to see you. Bonjour, Jeff. We've got Mirka watching. Hello, hello. Chuck says, hey, Meg from Chicago. Oh, my gosh. What's it like there in Chicago right now? Is it super cold? I bet it is. We've also got George Bell saying hi and Chuck saying coming down next month. Oh, amazing, Chuck. Can't wait to have you here. It'll be great. You can come in and watch the Facebook Live, live in person if you want. Um, Craig Malone says, hey, from Adelaide, Australia. Craig, you're watching again. Super cool. So it's Monday morning for you. February, would it be February 12th? Today's the 11th, right? So two days away from Valentine's Day for you. Eric has just dropped online from Aloha. Eric, are you watching from Hawaii by chance? I'm going to Hawaii in September. I think I'm going to, well, I'm going to go to Kauai. I think that's my plan. Um, side note, so as you, as I was just explaining with Ingrid and Kenneth here, we're talking aphrodisiacos. Aphrodisiacos. Am I saying that right? Aphrodisiacos. I feel like um, Julia Roberts in that scene from Eat, Pray, Love where she's saying, Atravestiamo, that beautiful Italian word, which means cross to cross over. Um, but if you say any word with an accent like that, it does sound, I mean, maybe I don't sound sexy at all, maybe I sound ridiculous. But I digress. We're talking about aphrodisiac foods here. Um, I think, thinking back to 2012, I think one of my first live television appearances in Toronto, Canada was on Valentine's Day in February 2012, and I talked about sexy food. I did many different chocolate recipes. Um, so I'm doing, I hearkened back to that when I was planning for this Facebook Live today, and I decided to call it Making Love in the Kitchen. Um, two reasons for that is if you know me, and, or if you've been to Arrhythmia, or if you've ever experienced my, my, my cooking, or, or been to a retreat that I've, that I've prepared food for, I'm all about uh, making sure we infuse love into every dish that we bake. Um, every day, no matter what day of the year it is, uh, St. Valentine's Day or not. Um, so we're making love in our fruits kitchen today, and also it's a little shout out to one of my, my culinary mentors that I worked with um, years ago, Megan Telfner. She used to have a blog online called Making Love in the Kitchen, and I always thought it was really fitting to be making love in the kitchen. Um, so today I'm just going to touch on a few ingredients that are, have long been known as aphrodisiacs, and then we're going to do a couple of recipes. Um, Lorena has joined us. Where are you right now, Lorena? Are you in Italy or where did I see you're up, you're up right now? Kenneth, Kenneth has joined in, ironically. So Kenneth is going to be checking to see if you guys have any comments or, or questions in, in the comments and comments. In the comments. What is that? In the collection of comments. If there's anything I need to answer, he's going to let me know. You are in Spain right now, Lorena. Lucky lady. Lucky, lucky lady. Okay. So. Before I get you started, I want to invite everyone, if you're looking for a good book to read, <laughs> with me, our founder and owner and um, bring the, the brains behind the operation here, Gerard Almond Howell has come out with a book called Shit the Moon Said. Obviously it doesn't say shit, 
for many different purposes, but I'm, I'm sure you can all hearken that that's what it was supposed to say. Um, and this book is absolutely incredible. If you've had any uh, questions about how Rhythmia came to be, why we do what we do here, this book will, will fee you in on a lot of the details. Uh, Jerry spent a long time getting this getting this book together, and it's there's also a documentary online called Mrs. Moon's Medicine that it was kind of the, treat, the trailer um, about this book, so I, I encourage you to Google that. Maybe we can put the, we'll put a link to the trailer in, in the comments here. But this book is now available on Amazon. Um, obviously, if you're coming down to Rhythmia, you can pick yourself up a coffee. I'm sure if you can grab Nick, Jerry when he's walking around the resort, he might give you a, a signing signature of it as well. But this book is absolutely incredible. I've just finished reading it. Um, beautiful insight into into the plant medicine, the miracles it creates, and what we're doing here, what our mission is, this whole entire team here at Rhythmia. So I encourage you to check it out on Amazon. And you will notice in the when you go to the Amazon page for this book, you'll see that there is shout out. I'm giving you a shout out, Gustavo. Sorry for the interruption here, but one of our staffers, I was explaining the term shout out the other day. He wanted me, I told him I was gonna give him a shout out. The next time I'm on my live TV, so I'm giving him a shout out here on Facebook Live. So that's my shout out to Gustavo. Okay, back to this. Um, you'll see if you go if you go to Amazon and find this, you'll see that in the frequently bought together section, there's another little book called Miracle Meals, which happens to be my cookbook that I've created a compilation of recipes from the Rhythmia buffets. I don't have a copy of that here right now. We've sold out. We've got 600 copies. Hopefully, that will be here this week. I've been saying that for a couple weeks, but uh, I'm certain that it will be here very soon. So we'll have copies for sale. If you're coming to Rhythmia, you can have that, and I will sign it for you, or you can order this one. And Miracle Meals is a package deal for under $40 on Amazon and have them both shipped directly to your door. So, that being said, we're going to get on to the aphrodisiacos. Ah, so I've got a few different ingredients here that I've laid out um, in alphabetical order because I, <clears throat> I like to be organized in that way. And the first thing I'm going to talk to you guys about, some of these are going to be sweet, some of them are going to be savory. So the first ingredient is arugula. Um, this spidey, spicy delicious leafy green is one of my favorites in the world. I've always, always loved this green. We get it organically from a farm nearby here. These are beautiful little um, adolescent leaves. They're not baby, they're not full grown. They're absolutely delicious. Peppery, mm, they're so delicious. And it's been long been known as an aphrodisiac. It apparently clears the mind while simultaneously increasing power and energy, which I think are all beautiful things when it comes to making love in whatever capacity you want to take that. The next thing we're going to look at is avocados, and I've got the most the most massive avocado here in the world. Avocados, if you eat them, you know that they are creamy, delicious, luscious, amazing. Quite feminine but in nature, but I guess as far as aphrodisiacs go, it's a lot more related to, to, to male sexuality. And I think, I guess in Spanish, or, but the Aztecs used to refer to the tree as the testicle tree, because avocados apparently grow in, in little groups of two. <laughs> So the testicle tree. So that's, I mean, there's a lot of foods out there that we refer to as aphrodisiacs merely just because of the shape and the way they look. A lot of things are phallic, like the banana. Now the banana also, you know, is always joked around. There's many different, I'm not, anyway, I'm not going to get into it, but there is an enzyme in bananas called bromelain that is also associated with males, uh, male libido. So that's where all we're going to touch on with that today. And that's going to be included in one of our recipes. So banana. Um, like I was saying, a lot of aphrodisiac foods are just referred to that as such because of the shape that Mother Nature gave them. And if you subscribe to the idea that Mother Nature gives, um, makes like, like food mapping, like almonds, or sorry, not almonds, walnuts, for example, are said to be a brain food, and Mother Nature didn't, you know, gave us a really obvious hint of that because wal walnuts actually look like brains. Um, carrots, if you cut them like a cross section down the middle, you see that they almost look like they have a little eye in the middle, the carotenoids in carrots are good for the eyesight, you know, so Mother Nature has given us a lot of hints about how certain ingredients are good for us. So certain things like bananas and avocados and, and what's another one? A fig, for example. They, they look quite sexual in nature, so you would, one would assume that they might be good for an aphrodisiac. So here I couldn't find any fresh figs in Costa Rica this time of year or any time of year for that matter um, that wouldn't have been imported. Um, so I have this, this bag that I brought from the States. Um, and you can, I mean, obviously, if you've never seen a fig, look at that. It's just beautiful and, and sensual and very feminine in nature. Figs are also a great source of plant-based calcium, as a side note. If you like to eat more of that in your diet, I love to eat those dried figs just straight out of hand. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is what? Almonds, which are going to be 
in two of our recipes that we do today. Almonds, apparently, have long been thought of as an aphrodisiac food, but take note, ladies, that the scent of almonds is said to turn, uh, sorry, the scent of almonds is said to turn women on, so men, maybe get yourself some almond essential oils, Kenneth, when you feel like making it a little bit more romantic with your fiance and dab on a little almond oil. <laughs> It'll taste like a delicious dessert. I mean, desserts in general turn me on, so I'm sure that any any sweet scent that a man puts on his skin is going to make anyway. I went to rock all almond at home and try to make all that oil. There we go. He's gonna, <laughs> did you hear that? He's going to go and break up all his almonds at home and try to make as much oil as possible. There we go. The next thing we can talk about briefly are asparagus. That's another, um, I don't have any of those here today. I could have picked some up, but it's not a local thing here, so I didn't feel like I needed to go out and hunt that down. Asparagus, again, quite phallic in nature, long been thought of as, as an aphrodisiac food, but also is on my list here. Cacao. The food of the gods, as we call it. So these are whole cacao um, seeds. And at, one, at some point, I want to bring in some whole cacao pods, the fruits, because I don't think we've ever talked about that on the live, and it's a really beautiful thing. Um, there is, I used to, my, I have a bakery here um, with my ex-husband. He still runs it, and we used to get fresh cacao fruit right from a farm, the fresh fruit, and then we would scoop out the seeds in the flesh, and we would dehydrate that and then toast off the seeds, and what you get is something like this, um, which is quite bitter. If you buy, you can buy them just like this at the store. Um, now nibs, which is something quite often we see it in the superfood and health, for, health food stores. That's just these seeds that have been like ground up into really um, chunks. Really, really great for adding texture to dishes. Um, I mean, this is the most unprocessed chocolate you can get. Um, chocolate has certain chemicals in it. Like, uh, is it a precursor to? I'm not a. I'm not a food scientist. I'm not a nutritionist. But there are certain compounds um, in uh, cacao and chocolate that induce the same feelings of um, falling in love. So eating chocolate can make you feel that warm, glowy, floaty, joyful, blissful feeling that falling in love gives you. And not to mention that many, many desserts, as far as I'm concerned, can taste quite orgasmic. Why? Chocolate-covered strawberries. I just made these for fun. I mean, come on, it's the easiest thing in the world. So these are fresh strawberries that I've dipped in dark, melted dark chocolate. Like, pick your favorite dark chocolate. I love any dark chocolate with sea salt. And I've got some with bee pollen on the outside, which is a complete food. I've got some with just coconut and goji berries. So we'll talk about goji berries next. Do you want to come, have, come and have one of these, Kenneth? Kind of so we think Jerry just popped by, um, and I gave him one of those. And he, that was his dessert after lunch today. So you're having no, almond oil? No almond oil. <laughs> you want to come and have one as well? Okay. We got some shy people saying they want a strawberry, but they won't come on camera to have it. Um, so the next thing we'll talk about is goji berries. Now, goji berries have considered a, been considered a food a source that boosts male fertility for many, many years. I was just explaining in the kitchen to a couple of the guys here what these were because they had never seen them before. So they, these are dehydrated goji berries. When I was in Ottawa, Canada, a couple of September's ago, I actually came across a farmer who was selling fresh goji berries. So he was in Ottawa, um, and these grow in the mountains in the Himalayas. Uh, for the most part, I'm sure they're growing many different places around the world now. But he figured, hey, if they can grow summer cold like that, he could grow them in Ottawa. So he was growing them. And I think it was, was it June or September that I visited there and he had them fresh. But they were super delicious. They had this beautiful texture, really moist. They popped in your mouth. Uh, but these are the dehydrated ones. Typically, you find these dried in the health food section or at any natural food store. Um, so it's been centuries in Asia. They've been considered the male, um, good for male libido. But also in Chinese medicine, they're used to strengthen the adrenal system. And the adrenal system really has um, control over all of our hormones. And obviously, you need to have good balance with your um, estrogen, testosterone, progesterone. All of those things need to be in balance so that you have a nice, healthy sex drive. So anything that can help with your um, hormones, the better. So goji berries. The next thing when we're talking about adaptogenic foods and things that balance out our hormones is maca root powder. Maca root powder is one of my... Whoa, sorry, the wind just blew it off of my eyeballs. I got maca in my eye. That's a sentence I've never said before. A maca root powder. So this is a really nice, here, you guys want to smell that? It smells kind of like a mesquite, mesquite smoky, caramelized flavor. I love the flavor of it. I add it to a lot of my, my sweet and savory dishes. But this is a dried Peruvian root, a tuber, that is um, dried and pulverized. This is typically how you buy it as an, is in powder form. 
And I've been using Maca for many, many years. I started using it when I was um, in my late 20s, early 30s as a way to help balance out my stress levels because I was uh, battling adrenal fatigue. And also, I've had problems with my menstrual cycle. I think I've mentioned that many, many times. You want one of these, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> passing around the strawberries. Um, the maca root has really helped me with that. As it's an adaptogenic food, which is a food that as you eat it, it progressively improves things in your in your body. So it's not like you're going to notice thing, anything overnight, but as you take it on a regular basis, you might notice things like a more even, healed, emotional state. Like I used to have really extreme ups and really extreme downs when it came to my emotions. But now I find I'm a lot more even keel and it takes a lot more to work me up um, in a negative way. It's also good for sex drive. So toss it in your morning smoothie, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, what's next? What else do I have next here? I've got cinnamon. So cinnamon is a warming food in Chinese medicine. Obviously, um, if you eat cinnamon, you know that it has a nice warming um, feeling to it when you eat it. That's going to help rub up your circulatory system and just get your body humming along. Same with ginger. It's good to get your um, your circulatory system going and just getting your juices going in your body in general. Another warm food. Also got chili peppers here. So these are just some red chili flakes that I'm going to add to one of our recipes coming up here, which are also really good for increasing circulation. And when you increase circulation, that can help more blood flow get to certain parts of the body, like the erog erogenous zones that need extra love and stimulation during sexual acts. That's my scientific way of describing <laughs> chili peppers as an aphrodisiac, and I'm not a scientist, but I think I did a pretty good job. So did I miss anything on my list? I think I've got everything I wanted to touch on. Look at that, so good. Okay, so now we're gonna get on to our recipes. Now, if you've been to Rhythmia, you may or may not have had our almond bliss balls. This is a very simple recipe. Um, there's just about a thousand different versions of it available on the internet right now, and I'm going to show you the one that we've been doing here at Rhythmia since, um, since before I even got here, because it's really, really simple. There's only uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, six ingredients. So that makes it super simple. And we serve it all the time, and people, you know, it's just a really nice, simple, sweet, sweet treat. So I've got here my food processor, and in it, we're just going to toss things, because that's how I like to cook. If you haven't noticed that yet, has anyone got any questions, or are they just listening to me ramble on about sex and food? All right. All right. So, first ingredient, almonds. I'm using whole almonds here. You could use, um, like, uh, what do you call it? Fillet, 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 filleted almonds. I get so confused sometimes with Spanish and English. I think we call it, when we buy the, the almonds that are sliced, <laughs> we call it fillet, filleted. Fillet, yeah. What would you call that in English? I don't know. It's, a, it's not important. You know what I mean. Not whole ones. <laughs> so we that in the food processor. It's going to get really loud when I get all the ingredients here. I'll tell you that. Um, I'm using raisins in my recipe. Hi, ladies. You want a chocolate-covered strawberry? They're going to get too melty. I've got Raven and Angie, two of our amazing staffers. But you got to come on camera for it. Okay. No one wants to come on camera with me today. There's a hand. So there's bee pollen, coconut, and goji berry oil. Like we're talking about aphrodisiac. Thank you. They love to Valentine's Day. There's another hand. This hand is hand. Oh, yeah. You want to come around? You're welcome. There's different choices there. What's your name? Leanna. Leanna. This is Leanna's hand. We're live on Facebook Live right now. Leanna just arrived. You want to come around and say hi? Uh, sure. Did you just check in? Just check in. Just today. Hi, everyone. Amazing. So it is Sunday, so we always have new 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 people. Our last week guests checking out and new guests checking in. So welcome. Thank you very much. Chocolate covered strawberries to celebrate your arrival. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hi You're everyone. <laughs> Come down to Rhythmia. Yes. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Slivered almonds. Slivered almonds. Thank you. Who gave me that information? Um, uh, Pam. Pam. Thank you, Pam. I was just saying to someone this morning that now that I'm speaking Spanglish all the time, I've lost so many of my like simple English words, like slivered almonds. I'm like I can't figure out how to say that in English. We got people coming out of the woodwork now for stra oh. strawberries. What's your oh, name? I'm Angela. Angela, hey, yeah. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We're too. live so. on Facebook right now doing the cooking challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Get a little wave in front of the camera. Re reach out, re reach out right in front. There we go. <laughs> Um, I, I, your cookies are so good. Those the chocolate good. ones last night. They were they vegan chocolate chunk. 
the chocolate chip they, ones. They were like real crisp rice flour. Cassava, yeah, so those are the gluten free chocolate chip cookies. And then today they were more peanut butter. Cookies. They were gluten free peanut butter cookies. Oh my today. god! So yes, good. amazing. Really? All made with love. We're talking aphrodisiacs and making love in the kitchen today. So <laughs> enjoy. You. You're welcome. All right, so. Back to the recipe. So we've got in here our almonds, and I'm going to post the, uh, the ingredients again in the comments, as I always do. Commercial. Commercial? Don't forget the the oil the almond for me. <laughs> so we're, we're just taking a little time out because um, Kenneth, I'm not sure if you heard, but Kenneth wants to make sure we reserve any almond oil for him. He's really he's picking up on this aphrodisiac information. <laughs> So we've got our almonds in the food processor. The next thing we're going to add here is going to be our sweetener, part, most part of our sweetener, and also our binding agent. These are raisins. Typically, these um, ooh, our strawberries are blown away. I'm going to put this over here. Typically, a lot of these energy ball recipes call for dates, but I think I've mentioned in the past that we don't get dates very freely and, and cost efficiently down here. So I've substituted raisins for a lot of my recipes. I'm going to put those in there. The next thing is chocolate. Obviously, we need some sort of um, chocolate component in our chocolate cacao or cacao bliss ball. So I've got here cacao powder. So this here, all this is, is these seeds completely pulverized into a powder, into a super, super fine powder. And we're using a lot because we want these to be really rich. So I'm going to dump that whole bowl in there. Whoops. Whoops. Oh, I've got a bit of the drop the whole bowl in there. Kenneth is writing away over there. So someone's got a question or comment, and we're going to wait to see. A pinch of salt. Um, like I said, always, I've said this in the past, a pinch of salt, whether you're doing a sweet or savory recipe, is going to really bring out the flavor. I'm actually going to put in more than a pinch because I love sea salt and chocolate together. I'm best thing ever. I'm putting quite a bit in. And then another sweetening component. And you could sub this out for something different. I'm using raw honey today. You could use maple syrup. If you're up in Canada or northern states, you could use agave you could um put in some stevia in which case if you're going to use stevia i would use liquid and you might have to um negotiate a little bit with the rest of the ingredients because you're not going to be using quite as much um, liquid like this is also going to be one of our binding agents binding agents so i'm just going to put that honey in there okay rico if you ask me honey is also an aphrodisiac because it is so lush and rich and delicious and i mean if you ever got honey on your fingers just licking it off is just a whole sensual experience in itself if you ask me I'm not going to go into much more detail about that. <laughs> Get myself into trouble on the Facebook Live. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lid on. I'm going to let this go. It's going to get loud for a minute. My apologies. That's because of the whole almonds. So I'm going to stop that for a moment to say, Tatiana, Bolton says, you can't wait to eat my yummy food in three weeks. Oh my gosh, so exciting, Tatiana. Can't wait to have you here. So, so, so excited. We'll, we'll be sure to make sure we have some chocolate love on the buffet for you when you're here. Lorena, the lovely Lorena, says, ciao, Bella. I say, ciao, Bella, back. I miss you, sweetheart. I love following you on the Instagram and seeing what you're up to, though. It's always super exciting. And Susan says, hi, Meg. I love watching you cook every Sunday. I'm a chef, too. Susan, where are you a chef? Where are you living? Where are you writing from? I'd love to know. Let me know. All right, so I'm going to see if I need to go a little bit more with this. I think I probably do a lot more. Oh, yeah, so I'm just getting in there with my spoon. You guys can see my hand um, to just help break this up a little bit. You can see that the, te the texture is getting broken down, but it's still pretty chunky. We got big chunks of almonds. Oh, look at all of a sudden we've got a robotic camera. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Kenneth. This is why I need you here. When I'm you helping me, it's never the same.
you find that it's not coming together and it's not being it's not moist enough to stick stick together in balls, you can add some coconut milk or coconut oil. And I'm not going to go too much further with this because you guys get the picture. I'm going to show you what it looks like in here. Mm, smells delicious. So we're getting there. You can see there's a lot of big chunks still. I mean, for me, I like a little bit of texture, so I would even go just like this far and then roll it into balls. And then what you can do is you can roll it into coconut, into shredded coconut. Susan Rebecca Thomas, sorry, that's a really big close up. In Colorado, near Aspen. I would love to come cook with you in Costa Rica. Oh, that would be amazing, Susan. Well, I'm gonna be coming up to, to Denver, I think, at some point in the next year. Oh my goodness, look at that. If I move, my camera moves with me. You're not moving it anymore, can I? <laughs> I'm having way too much fun. Way too much fun with the Facebook Lives. This is my job. I was just talking with Nicole, one of our, our other staff members this morning. You know, she covered, I teach a dance class here on Fridays, and she covered for me this week, and she, she said she had a moment where she was just like, wow, this is my job. Like, how hard is that to just teach a dance class and be in a good mood and, and you know, shake your tail feather for an hour on a Friday afternoon? So blessed, so grateful. Jerry, thank you so much for, for giving us this beautiful space to do what we love and share share love and, and talk about love because, my God, I could not be in a happier, happier place and be so humbled and, and grateful that we get to do this. I get to do this for my living, helping people help themselves. It's absolutely a blessing, and, and I'm so happy about that. Okay. Well, we're sense of here. So we're going to move on to the next ingredient, the next recipe before we, before I get any more teared up. So the next thing is going to be a really simple smoothie. And this is a smoothie that you can make anytime. I'm gonna have this for lunch after this, after this Facebook Live today. And it's just, it's a really simple, delicious smoothie that includes a lot of our aphrodisiac foods. So the first thing we're gonna use is banana. So we already talked about this. This is really especially good for the for the men out there. And I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a banana and a half because these are pretty decent sized bananas. My recipe is gonna call for two. And ideally, frozen is best anytime you're making a smoothie just to help keep your banana thick and cold. The next thing we're gonna add is our macaroon powder. So I think I've, I've already talked about the I've already talked about all of the health benefits of a lot of these things. So I'm gonna add in a good tablespoon of macaroon powder. I'm gonna add in some cacao. You could use cacao powder. I'm gonna use some nibs here. And then you could always um, break up a few of these uh, into nibs. Uh, sorry, I'm using the whole seed. You can break them up into nibs just to put on top of the smoothie at the end for some texture. Then we're going to add a little bit of cinnamon. Warm it all up. I'm going to add a pinch of those chili flakes that I was talking about. So these are just red chili flakes. Here you go. What else? Cardamom. I didn't have any cardamom today, but cardamom is also a great aphrodisiac, and that's one that I didn't talk about. Um, and it's warming and pungent and also is good for increasing your blood, blood flow, which is why it's said to be a bit of an aphrodisiac. Yeah. Then the next ingredient would be your liquid sweetener. So you could add in stevia maple syrup or honey or whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm not going to add any today because I feel like my banana is going to be more than enough. But actually, I'm going to add in a couple of goji berries. That's going to give a little extra sweetness and texture and thickness. I'm freestyling a little bit. That's not going to be in the recipe that you guys get. And then your milk and or ice. So down under here, I've got my freezer. And I've just got some almond milk here. You could use hemp milk, cashew milk, soy milk, whatever milk you want to do, cow's milk, goat's milk, what have you. Put that in there. And then in my other freezer, I've got my ice. So what I'm going to do, oh, almonds. Forgot to do almonds. Not almond oil, but I do have almond butter. That's what I'm going to put in here today. We're doing a Facebook Live, ladies. You want to come say hi to the world? Come on over. Did you guys just check in? You look incredible. You're so sun kissed. What's your name? Adria. Adria. I'm Meg officially. Nice to meet you. I'm Meg officially. I don't know what that even means. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. Every Sunday, 2 p.m. We've already met. But, but again, Meg officially. My name. Nice to meet you. Angela. She's still Angela. And? Unofficially, I'm Roxanne. And Roxanne. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Senior. I will in a minute. What are you making? Right now we're, we're talking about the DGX because Valentine's Day is around the corner. Oh darn. Well, what's in there, honey? So here I've got bananas, cacao, chili flakes, oh, yeah. cinnamon, goji berries, oh, banana, good. which is good for male sex drive. Apparently the rolling, the, the, that enzyme is good for male you know, libido. Macaroon powder, which is good for all of us and our hormones. Uh, a little extra in your, in your house in the morning. Mm -hmm. Ashwagandha, yes, which is something I don't have a lot of here in Costa Rica. 
that would be another great herb Cornelope, added. That's another good there herb we go. To use. There we go. See, look at this. All of these amazing different like naturopathic and homeopathic and Chinese herbs. Like you Google, there's going to be lots. We're using whole food, whole food versions here today. We've got ginger. We talked about cinnamon. We talked about the whole cacao seed. Everything from arugula and avocados. Did you know? I know because I was doing a bit of research that the ancient Aztecs used to refer to the avocado trees as the testicle tree. Because the avocados apparently grow in little bunches of twos. <laughs> I don't know, honey. They're green. I mean, that would stop me. I know, right? I mean, then, then things can get weird. Things can get weird. But an almond also, apparently, the scent of almonds is said to turn women on. Really? Yeah. So Kat yeah. was like, give me the almond oil. Where can I find almond oil? <laughs> Excellent. So the fun things that we learned when we were researching for Facebook. Well, Facebook thank you for doing this. There's, there's, another, oh, course. Course. there's another great base. You can take fresh green tea instead of tea leaves mm -hmm. and let it sit really long. You get more antioxidants. And you can use every portion of the leaves. There you go. So I use that as my base for the protein shakes for myself and my clients. Awesome. Then you get some of your green tea. Amazing. I don't know if you heard that, but she was talking about using green tea as the base for smoothies and things like that, which would be a super, super delicious and, and, and obviously super, super high potent health benefit to, to add to your morning. High octane, high yeah, octane yeah. smoothie, but not the tea bag, the real, the real least clean yeah. green tea. Yeah, or matcha even. You can use, like I use matcha in a lot of my smoothies and matcha green tea. Yeah, toss that right in. <laughs> Layer it on, my friends. You can do anything. That's the beauty of smoothies. You can make them so nutrient dense. Yeah. Don't put too much spirulina in, though. I've thrown out some of these that tasted too much, like spirulina. Okay. Tip from the or pros. Oringa. <laughs> or <oringa. laughs> Thanks for stopping by. I keep watching. <laughs> all right, so all we're going to do here is we're going to blend all of this good stuff up, and then I've got my cup of ice here that I'm going to add in at the end just to keep it cold because my bananas weren't frozen, so the smoothie's going to be a little bit warm. So part of the noise, once again. <laughs> Um, 
So I'm gonna put the recipes from today, a little bit about all the different aphrodisiac foods, link to my website, link to my book and Jerry's book. I'm gonna put that all in the comments. Stay tuned for that after the Facebook Live today. Next week, I'm going to be talking about kale. I believe the name of my Facebook Live next week is All Hail Kale. And I've come up with the title of that. I'm working on the content right now. I'm definitely gonna be talking about a couple of my massaged kale recipes. There's been many of my clients in the past that said they hated kale, never wanted to eat it until I made them a massage kale and it changed their minds about that. So I'm gonna teach you guys all how to do that at home. There's gonna be at least two different massage kales. One of them's gonna be more of a sweet and savory one. One of them will be a curry kale. We might do some kale chips. We might do, we're gonna do whatever I feel like doing that day, to be honest. <laughs> all hail kale. So that's next Sunday. And then I can't remember what I'm doing after that. Maybe Miracle Meals, which will be a series of recipes from the cookbook. So stay tuned, everybody. Um, I'm just waiting. Kenneth is writing some down some notes for me, and I wanted to do a couple sh couple more shout outs to our viewers, and then we're going to wrap this show up. What are we at for time? 2:35. Hey guys, I've been wrapping this up at 2:37 pretty consistently, so I'm right on target. Even though I did again say to Kenneth, we're going to keep this one short today. Didn't quite do that, but who, what do we got here? A San Caller says hello from Vietnam. Oh my God! I think this is the first time we've had someone watching. That was I don't know what just happened with my voice there, but I was super excited about Vietnam. Awesome. Thank you for watching. And Susan says, thank you for the aphrodisiac recipes. I love your energy and happiness. Susan, I love you. And thank you for joining in. And the recipes, again, will be in the comments as well as my website and all of that information. Thank you for guys for watching. I can't wait to see all of you people that are watching that are on their way to Rhythmia in the next while. I can't wait to meet you in person. Make sure you come and say hello as soon as you get here. Buy the books. And stay tuned for our Dr. Jeff tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Costa Rican time. We'll be doing his Facebook Live. Next Friday, Krishna will be live at 1 p.m. Costa Rica time. And Saturday, Jerry again, 2 p.m. with his um, I Got My Miracle segment. So thank you so much. Love you all. Happy Sunday, fun day.